everybody, my name is Felicity. I am one of the co-founders of Potly, and today we are doing a live broadcast of our very first live show of the Potluck series. And the Potluck series is something that we kind of just dreamed up to be a little bit more socially distanced and we can connect with you on a weekly basis. We're showing every Wednesday at 6 o'clock and this is our inaugural show. I have a very, very special guest and this is the one, the only, Andres from Mikuna <laughs> Kitchen. Hi. And the reason why this person is so special in this show is because we're going to be using his ingredients from his box. And these are it. And we're going to be going through them in a little bit. But every week, we're going to be inviting a different chef. It might be Andres. It might be someone else. And they're going to take these ingredients and whip up two recipes and you're here to follow. You can absolutely join his list, get your own box here if you're in the San Francisco Bay Area, um, and that's it. Andres, uh, take it away. Cool, so um, like Phil mentioned, first of all, thank you for having me. Of course. Um, I am the chef owner of Mikuna Kitchen, uh, Instagram handle Mikuna Kitchen SF. We do uh, plant-based uh, meal kits and pop-ups, but since this whole thing started, um, I wanted to find a, a way to connect with the community and find something that the community really needed and that was access to fresh vegetables. So um, that kind of birthed Freshies, which is the program that you see here. Every Tuesday, uh, I curate a box of fresh, local, organic, um, farm, um, direct vegetables um, and it changes periodically. So this week, we have um, uh, painted serpent, cucumber, forno di toro, uh, peppers, we have prunes, fresh prunes. Um, oh my god, I'm spacing on the name of that. It's lemon Sage? verbena. Oh, lemon verbena. Well, what is lemon um, verbena? So lemon verbena has this, um, it's really fragrant. Oh. It's citrusy. It definitely lemony. smells like lemon. It dries up really fast and really quickly, and most people will probably have interacted with it in the form of a tea. It has oh, really great antioxidant properties, anti-inflammatory properties, and relaxing properties. Like and I, I really love that like every single box you have, you always have an herb. Yes. This one's kind of special. <laughs> I haven't really seen it before. Yeah. Um, but what else do people kind of use this to um, spice up? So what we're going to do today, um, so yeah, other than tea, you, you see it a lot in sweet applications too mm -hmm. because it's... Um, it's one of those things like kind of like tea. lavender oh, okay. um, and all these like other herbs that can get a little perfumey if you use I too see, much of I it. See. So today what I'm going to do with everything you see here, um, I'm going to do two recipes. We're going to take the cucumber, the prunes, uh, and make them into a lovely little fresh salad. Oh, yeah. That we're going to be including this lemon verbena in a vinaigrette. So that's a fun way to kind of introduce this. I feel like... Uh, the sweeter herbs and the more perfumey herbs get along really well with fruit. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. a good way to kind of like bring that into the sweet prune application. Is that something that like if if we have an herb and we it's kind of starting to die and you don't really have a recipe for it, can we just kind of chop it up and put it into any salad? Is that? Yeah, that's a good way to do it. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, sure. Cool. Like two things that um, I love a good herb salad. Anytime mm -hmm. that you have something that's like looking a little sad, <laughs> otherwise, just um, I often have bunches of herbs just hanging Drying. by my windowsill. Okay, yeah, I like see, see. especially oregano. Like um, right now is uh, season for nepotella. It's kind mm -hmm. of like a cross between mint and oregano. That one you dry is really fabulous. Oh, and cherry, love especially that. Love like, that. Like summer uh, veggie chimichurri. Awesome. But, yeah. So I mean, the big purpose of why I wanted to do this show was because I want to see, you know, like there's sometimes you get a box and you don't really know what to do with it. And I start <laughs> profusely Googling and going into a, a really deep Pinterest hole. I'm on Bon Appetit and, you know, all the different websites to try to come up with things because sometimes I just don't know what to make things with, you know, and I don't have recipes. Um, I kind of grew up in a childhood where 
I ate out almost every meal. Um, and that means that my mom didn't have, like, didn't pass down things for me. And that this is, this is where I seek knowledge. So um, I'm going to be asking a lot of questions that I personally have about, like, oh, what would you use that for? Oh, what would you use that for? Um, because those are just personally the interests of mine. And then, of course, we're going to be using Potley's ingredients. Everything is infused so that this makes this, elevates this meal even more um, and takes it up a notch. And yeah, we're we're just super excited. Andres, you, um, you, the first um, thing is tacos. The second recipe is the first recipe was the uh, the salad. The oh, the salad recipe salad. is okay. tacos. Oh, so I, I'm so sorry. I, I apologize. So, um, with the tacos, I kind of as a plant based chef, um, one of my um, kind of like callings is to kind of get people to understand like how to use uh, vegetable proteins and how, what vegetables you can find, what, yeah, the most protein in, I guess. And kale is one of those, all cruciferous veggies, all green veggies that turn yellow as they age are really high in protein. And so like a good piece of like steak, you don't want like, you don't really want to bite into it raw, it requires a little bit more love and attention. So like when you grow scale, or like when you fry a Brussels sprout, it really just changes it and it, like the umami notes come out. That's because it's so rich in protein that it has that same um, uh, reaction as when you would deep fry a piece of animal protein. Cool. Um, so what we're doing uh, for the tacos today, we're gonna bring out as much umami as we can into the scale. We're gonna um, roast some of these uh, Corno di Toro, um, bull's horn peppers, uh, toss them in a chimichurri, and um, just make a yummy little plant-based taco. Uh, yeah. That's so, I mean, this really does look like a... <laughs> it does look like a bull's horn, right? That's yeah. cool. Um, All right. Yeah, it's I love it. Cool I mean, go yeah. ahead. You, you start, start off. It. I'm just going to like crawl off to the side and then I'm going to pop in with, you know, some questions while, while you cook. But, you know, <laughs> you're, you're, on the, you're on the clock now. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. to, I'm going to start with the chimichurri because it's one of these things that um, mm -hmm. gets better as it sits a little bit. Um, so I have some cilantro leaves and uh, some fresh mint. Traditionally in a chimichurri you find cilantro, oregano, um, parsley, and um, a few other things, uh, pepper flakes and um, red wine vinegar. Today I'm using mint because uh, I like the sweetness of mint. Um, I like how it's going to play with the um, with the sweetness of the peppers. And so it's a fun switch. And you could also really kind of switch the herbs around however you like them. Uh, if you were one of those unfortunate few who are, who think uh, cilantro tastes like soap, yeah. you can switch it out. That's <laughs> crazy, but like. It, it's so interesting that cilantro is like, I mean, there's seasons for everything. I mean, everything right now in this box is so, like, you yeah. you, you physically get them, like, Sunday or Monday, these these products. Yeah, everything arrives Sunday and then, Monday. And then on Tuesday, we received the box. Um, and, you know, I just went to um, a, a farm where the, I, was, I was harvesting cilantro. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it's coriander when it's like dried <laughs> and it's cilantro when it's fresh. Yeah, and um, yeah, like I said, I like, my ratio is to try to do one um, savory herb, one sweet herb, oh. and then a couple of aromatics. So in this case, my sweet herb is my mint, yeah. my savory herb is my cilantro, which is kind of like in between because it can be one or the other. Right. And then my aromatics are going to be uh, whole cumin, and uh, dried oregano. So right. whole, so if it's dried, those are aromatics, right? Or what does it mean to be an aromatic? For me, it's like usually what you consider a spice. So I see, um, I see. Yeah, uh, you can usually, yeah, you can say dried, but um, you can do, for instance, um, instead of the um, Cilantro, you could do parsley. Instead of the mint, you could do oregano. I see, I see. And then instead of these guys, you could do a coriander seed I see, or a mustard seed. I see. Um, yeah. So just give it a nice. Uh, what I'm doing here is toasting these guys a little bit. They got a little bit of color. Super like easy to tell. Ooh. And they just smell a little toasty. Yeah. Cumin is such a um, a smell that's like I associate with lamb. 
Yes. Yeah. So chimichurri is a good is um, if you're not familiar at home, it's a traditional um, what's the word? Argentinian. Oh, uh, sauce. okay. Yeah, and it's always consumed with asado, asado being grilled meat. So um, it's great for anything that's smoky, anything that's gamey. Um, mm -hmm. So here, I'm gonna start with this guy. I have my um, cumin. I'm gonna do a little bit of this dry Mexican oregano. And then just gonna start mashing these guys a little bit. And what is your cooking style? Like, you've mentioned, you know, things from uh, Argentina. I'm like, well, well what, is, what was the, the country that you started talking about? Uh, you, you mentioned Argentina. Um, we're making tacos, so um, south of America. Where, um, what, what kind of, where do you draw inspiration from? And how did you kind of, what is your kind of style, if you were to call yourself, a, you know, that... that <laughs> Cuisine chef, I don't know. Words today are hard. <laughs> but you so, got me. Um, I think that's, it's funny because I, I, at different stages in my life, I've answered mm -hmm. that question very differently. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was in culinary school, I was obviously trained in the um, Eurocentric like styles of cooking. Like French. Yeah, like. you know, so French, Italian. We did a right. tiny moment on Japanese food, but not mm -hmm. very like in-depth. Mm -hmm. And, um, but... God, I was born in uh, South America, in Ecuador, uh, and um, when I emigrated over here, I lived in LA, so there was a really strong Mexican right. influence, right. and that Chicano culture there is like something, some next level, uh, and the food, you can taste it, right, and then I moved up here to the Bay Area, and I'm about to be here almost 10 years now, so that influence has come in too, like not only the way that Bay Area chefs the relationship the Bay Area chefs have with their farms and their farmers and the, the community, but also there's a very strong Asian influence. Right, right. So right. I do call, uh, consider myself a Pan-American chef mm -hmm. because I take all that and put it through this lens of um, kind of funnel it into a, a plant-based um, narrative, mm -hmm. right? So I feel like uh, in the plant-based world, communities of color are not really very strongly represented right now. So I feel like with my food, I want to kind of invite people in and make it accessible and say like, hey, you can get a really bomb taco and it doesn't have to happen in a minute. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, that that was actually um, one of our pop-ups and this is the, actually the reason why we started initially working together was, um, of course I met you through Big Bad Wolf and then um, initially for all of Potley's launches at um, dispensaries, we would do bartender educations, and during these bartender educations, we would always invite Andres. We had you and Amp as like our, you know, rising pop-up chef stars, um, and that was actually the first time I had a veg vegetable taco, or like that was the, that was an emphasis of the product, and right. and you know like there. Honestly, like ve ve vegetarian sometimes has a bad name, or like the, it's it's always like okay, you're gonna use tofu and you know all the ingredients are, but like the the and I cannot remember what exactly you made, but the, it was so delicious that like it didn't matter if there was meat or not in it. It was just the flavors that were so good, and every one of those bud tenders at Harborside at the time were were just obsessed. They were so obsessed with um, what you made, and it, I think it really made a lasting impression. Harborside is one of our dear, dear clients, and um, shout, shout out, out to uh, Harborside Oakland, San Jose, um, as well as the one in the desert, um, you know, always, always using a little bit of that potly olive, I see, um, you know, always um, taking care of us, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that was, that to me is one of the most fun parts of it. It's like when I bring something to people who are usually on the boards or who have, who have an expectation of what they're about to receive and then maybe we blow up your minds along the way. Yeah, which is so, also the point of making the freshies box, right? Like exactly. it was, you, I remember when you were like, hey, I started this new thing. Uh, I'm just trying to get more people to eat vegetables, right? And you are really yep. doing God's work, right? <laughs> Um, so. so a lot of mothers would be very grateful for my existence. Right. <laughs> anyway, so um, right here what I have is um, the cumin, uh, the oregano, and I muddle that up with a little bit of chili flakes. 
Now you could use the Italian chili flake, you could use a dry mm -hmm. chili arbol. This is actually a togarashi. Mm -hmm. um, it's a Japanese pepper flake. It's really fine. There's almost some right. citrus notes to it. Mm -hmm. It's really mm -hmm. yummy and it's really spicy too. It's like, so I'm super into it. It's what they have at ramen shops. Yeah, yeah. So the togarashi they have a ramen shop usually has like sesame and, and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So they have the one that's seasoned with sesame and the one that's not. That's one I try to get for like all my cooking stuff. Most of it rather. And then I did half of the herbs, half of each of what I've cut up. Uh, because I'm going to muddle it and it's going to break up into the chimichurri. Mm. Um, the rest of the herbs are going to get folded in at the end. A little bit of salt, some of this fabulous this olive oil, yeah. and some vinegar. So, um, how much olive oil do you use? Um, what's your ratio olive oil to vinegar? On a chimichurri? Yeah. Um, you know, I think I do anywhere from two to one, depending on your two, two parts olive oil to one part vinegar, depending on your vinegar. Taste your vinegar. If it's really pungent and really intense, I'll go a little less. Also, I like a lot of vinegar in my cheese. Same. Right? I'm it's like a, uh, I really like um, acidic. I like tart. Yes. Oh, that smells delicious. So, oh, good. wow. Oh, that's got some nice notes to Oh, it. chimichurri is like bomb.com. <laughs> and a lot of people like this with steak. Mm -hmm. What else do you kind of make with that, like have as a side to chimichurri? I find that chimichurri goes really well with anything smoky. So mm -hmm. um, I like, it's actually my preferred condiment for a, a charred cauliflower, charred peppers. And again, think of like taste whatever you're gonna pair with raw and then think or yeah and then think of like what are the herbs that are gonna go well with it. Mm -hmm. So when I do it for cauliflower I tend to go more savory. Mm -hmm. When I do it for like sweet peppers or roasted peppers I go sweeter. Mm -hmm. When I go for um, grilled fruit like you can do uh, grilled uh, peaches with like a sweet herb chimichurri. Ooh. It's really fun. Well I haven't <laughs> heard um, using a fruit like a grilled fruit yeah. with um, this is like a savory sauce, right? It's very savory. Um, so I've never like thought of that, but that sounds divine. <laughs> divine. I love this. I love it. So I love it's it. multi-purpose. And the cool thing about, um, it kind of has like its own history in Argentina. Every household has its own version. version. Okay, cool. Yeah. What do they change up? The herbs? Um, that's, you know, I don't know firsthand. So I'm assuming it's the herbs. I'm assuming it's like, you know, the, uh, the ratios. Yes, yes. The yes. pepper flake, the heat mm -hmm. level. Um, yeah. But one thing that I would, I mean, you could do this in a food processor mm. and, or a blender. No, that's more it's authentic. Just something There's just more that, love that you're just yeah, exactly. putting just like into it. So it just changes it up completely. Mm. So. I'm gonna get this here and thank you so much. Oh, I forgot one herb in the chimichurri. I can't believe I forgot that. It's like the crowning oh. achievement of this week's box. So this week's box included garlic scapes. Have you ever had garlic scapes? Um uh, I think what they are are uh, in Chinese is um Chinese kind of stir fry them, I yes. think. Uh -huh. uh, and it's called Jiu Te, I think. Because that's what it looks like, and I'm not sure. But anybody that's watching, is it Jiu Te? <laughs> am I right or am I right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I think that's what it is. So, what are they called in English? Uh, garlic scapes. So, mm -hmm. they're um, basically a, um, a, a garlic chive. I see, so, I see, yeah. Um, it's, they have the sweetness of a chive, like that, that sweet grass quality, but they also have um, a, that raw garlic pepperiness. And do you use the, um, the tips? Then? Yes. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. The, the tips actually bloom and then you get garlic flowers out of those. Um, but you can use the tips. You can actually pickle the tips. I had pickled ramps and pickled garlic scapes. These guys have so much flavor. We're gonna put this, these into our salad too. Yeah. Here, so. um, 
I'm just going to let it be known that um, one day I'm going to start a pickling <laughs> side hustle in which I just have like, I have these bookshelves over here and I just want to fill them up with just different types of pickles in different I methods and then like you know yes. like as you know that like the ones at the end have been pickled for longer and yeah. then it's just like it looks like art on the wall um yeah that's that. just like on my list of things that i i'm gonna get to you know <laughs> <laughs> things that i'll do at some point yeah um okay so we have the chimichurri that's ready now i'm gonna go over how to roast the pepper um uh through the i kind of roasted a few because it does take a while, but um, we're going to get this guy nice and hot. A uh, hot plate is basically a pan without a <laughs> handle. So once this is hot, I'm just gonna go directly on here. Mm, and I'm gonna char all it. the sides, get the skin nice and charred. The, the cool thing about these peppers is they're very thin skinned and they're very sweet in flavor. So you don't absolutely need to um, to peel them. This is just more to get some flavor. Just letting you know we're 20 minutes till time. Cool. All right. Okay. So these guys are going um, while that goes. I'm going to prep veggies for a salad and make that dressing. Yum! Oh my gosh, I wish you guys could smell this right now. Well, that's kale, but this kale is so pretty. It's like purple stems and beautiful situation going on. All right, so. Who did you learn how to cook from? So I, you know, my like earliest food memories were with my grandmother from my mom's side. My both my grandmothers were like hustlers. Like my dad's mom awesome. had her own um, kind of like a, a few businesses actually. Cool. Uh, she was super well respected in the community. But my mom's mom had a, a food business, a food stand. And she, every weekend, the family would gather at her house and everything revolved around La Venta, like the food sale. Like, my aunts uh, would make the empanadas. My uncles oh, would help, awesome. make the, help make the masa because you had to like grind it and then uh -huh. cook it. And it's like cooking this big like dough, you know, and you're stirring yeah. it. And it's like really intense work. My mom always brags about how, about her upper body strength because of making the masa. But oh yeah. <laughs> sure, she's like so really fun. <laughs> she was jacked. <laughs> it was such a great time. Like, I mean, it was such a fun time for us yeah. as kids because... Oh my know, God, like these look were... so pretty. I'm going to show okay. one. They look like little flowers. They also kind of look like pasties. <laughs> <laughs> they do. But these would actually be the perfect ones that, to put over mm -hmm. your eyes during a spa. Taste one. Mm. What, do you think? Oh. what are these called? Like the type of so, cucumber. This is a painted serpent. So it's really beautiful. They grow really long. They have a nice, uh, relatively thinner skin to conventional cucumbers. Mm. And the flesh is a little bit sweeter, don't you think? It is a little bit sweeter. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, so I'm just going to cut them uh, into, you know, uh, what's, you know, half. relatively thin rounds. Um, and then I'm going to half them. So yeah. you get like these cute little half moons, right? Yeah, they're really, really, um, really quite thin, the. If you have a mandolin also. If you have a mandolin, yeah. What's, what are we calling those? Um, a half an inch, a quarter inch? Um... It's like quarter inch. It's not <laughs> half inch. Half inch is a lot. It's like not even a, it's like quarter centimeter. Yeah. <laughs> so you hear that snap crack Yeah, I love that. Is Drop it like it's hot. Ooh. Roasting. It, oh God, that smell is so fabulous. Like, oh, I love that. But yeah, so uh, when we were kids, that was kind of like where food was the epicenter of all that. But, um, you know, I was seven years old. So I remember, I remember those memories as a child, but I never really kind of like got with my grandma. I was like, hey, this is how you make this or you make that. I kind of got really into cooking um, in high school. Mm. Um, I started kind of like making meals and kind of like exploring that um, alongside my mom. She's, she's such a badass cook, and 
Um, awesome. The reason why I do a lot of like um, Chicano and uh, Mexican inspired food too is that eventually she would make all these like great Ecuadorian dishes mm -hmm. and that's how she kind of kept that culture alive. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but she also... It's so much passed down through food. Exactly, yeah. But she would also kind of like entertain her cu curiosity mm -hmm. by learning uh, Mexican dishes from her like mm -hmm. homies at school. <laughs> she was in, in English school and she had her oh, friends right, there. Oh, right, right, right. And okay, so cool. she would be so excited, we'd come home and she'd be like, look, I learned, I learned how to make pozole. And she would like give us a spoonful of broth and burn our lips. And of course she wasn't worried about that. <laughs> <laughs> she was more excited about the fact that she learned how to make a fabulous pozole. Oh, that's pozole. the sweetest thing. Um, what, what good memories, you know? <laughs> yeah, and that's kind of when I started. Um, I professionally, though, I, I went on through. Um, oh my God, are we going to grill these pulats? Uh, we are not. Oh, okay, never brown, mind. But we could if you like. <laughs> no, because no, you mentioned grilled peaches, and they're like peach shaped, and I, I don't know. I was like, maybe that's something you do with pulots too. You I'm can sorry. You definitely grill pulot. I think that'd be great. And if you have pulots, you do that. These are prunes. Wait, they're not pulots? <laughs> no. <laughs> what? I'm mind blown. I thought these were pulots. They look like them. They're actually fresh prunes. So cute thing about prunes is that all prunes are plums, but not all plums are prunes. So try some. Oh my god, that's like fast. that way. I'm so confused. <laughs> so if you try these guys up, you'll get, you know, your conventional like. I thought drum. what makes a plum or like a prune. Is that they're like bigger? Mm. I thought it was the size, but you know what? You know, I stand corrected. <laughs> I don't know shit about food. Well, I just like to eat food. Mm -hmm. Prunes are the dried plums, kind of like a big fat raisin, right? Um, mm. And the thing with these guys is that the skin is a little bit thicker, ooh, and ooh, just ooh. like all, ooh, this guy has first seen. So let's take a break from prunes. You see how this pepper is like nice and charred all around? Yeah. This side is still a little funny. It's gonna be hard to actually get that, that char on here. Mm. So I'm just gonna go ahead and steam it now because like I said, this the skin on these guys is so thin, you're not really trying to peel it. You're just, I'm just trying to get that like fire roast But it. that color is gorgeous. So then you go into a Ziploc bag or a container with like an airtight lid or any bowl with some plastic wrap, wrap over it. And let them sweat for a little bit. That's going to loosen the skin, separate them, oh. and get back to them. We're going to peel them. This is some insider knowledge. <laughs> I didn't know you had to let them sweat. <laughs> I um, have been like binge watching the final table. <laughs> oh. Just watching all the, the cooking shows. They make some great stuff. I, I've actually yeah. picked up um, the, the Padma cooking show. Uh, it's not a cooking show, it's a food traveling yeah, show. Yeah, What's yeah. it called? Um, Taste America? Taste of America? Oh, I would love to watch it. It's yeah. really beautifully shot and it's just, you know, it's more on the, about the immigrant experience. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to um, kind of eight, slice these into eights. Um, so what I was saying about these guys is that um, prunes have a slightly thicker skin than plums do. And in the tradition of plums, the skins tend to be a little bit tart where the flesh is the sweet part. So uh, the nice thing about these is that, yes, the skin is extra tart, but the flesh is extra sweet. So it kind of counterbalances that. It also makes them really good for a, an, a savory application like we're doing today um, in a salad with all these like kind of bright notes and like intense flavors. That would be exactly what we want. So do you know the difference between plum and pulat? A pulat is a actually a cross between a plum and an apricot, I believe. Oh. And they look, and they look very similar. They're slightly smaller in size than a plum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They uh, have yellow flesh like these guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The skin is tart. There's almost a crunch to the skin itself. Yeah. The flesh is. Can I be honest? I can't tell the difference between a prune <laughs> and a prune. Yeah. I can see that. I can see that. You're like, I can see that for you. I can see, no, I can see that. 
That's just you. You're just a little special. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, as, as you said that and it's I cool. tasted it, I thought, okay, yeah. <laughs> you know, because, you know, I think I, I, I think I may have had dried prunes, and those are super sweet, but when it's dried and in that yeah. shape, like, that's the only time that I've heard prune. Right. Not in this contest, like, not fresh in a prunes. fresh contest. Yeah. yeah. So, um, it's kind of like raisins, right? As when you dry up the raisins, they yeah. get a lot sweeter. Too. It's a lot sweeter, but it's more, um, it's more f fruit forward. Wow. I'm trying to think of the difference between like a, a raisin and how I would think of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm at a loss for words today. It's, they're all delicious. I love, I love, this is like my, stone fruits are my, one of my favorite fruits. I Absolutely. Know, yeah. yeah, stone Actually, fruits are I know amazing. You the box at the beginning of the summer, we had um, angel conks. They're a, um, they're a strain of apricot. It's a white apricot. Oh. That has like. Oh, I got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It has a three week season. Oh, it's and only in that area. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. I mean, that's the cool thing about this box is you get some special <laughs> things in here. Yeah, that's the nice thing about going through Farmers too is that we get to kind of have the first dib at whatever's happening that, that season. Right? Like this that is still season. on. Do you want me to turn that? Um, we can keep it on because we're going to do some other things on this. All right. So Trust the chef. We're going Don't to be a little <laughs> make a nag. dressing. And then we're going to build this salad. Mm. So for the dressing, I'm going to start with dicing up some garlic scapes. I'm one of those people who, like, when I'm working on a cutting board, I put everything there until it's time. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm noticing that. I'm <laughs> glad that you start. Because I'm like, you know, I wouldn't, like, I'm just not a... <laughs> What's the word that I'm trying to say? I'm not a very. It just this thing is so organized, and when I cut and things like things go all over, and this is like the most beautiful selection from, and it's even like color organized from like reds into the green into the sauces over there. It's really a beautiful. Is this this is mise en place, right? Yes, yes. Absolutely. You can't. You have to stay organized. All right, so you cut off the like very tip of that chili so this is just it came in the case of the chili peppers and i think this this farmer also grows um um fresh chili arbol, and i've mm -hmm. never had it fresh before and so i saw it i thought okay let's use it <laughs> <laughs> so it's i want it very I spicy it. it's very similar to a um a a Thai chili. Yeah. Incredible. So, I'm starting this dressing. I'm going to take my lemon verbena leaves and some of this fabulous poppy olive oil. Oops. And just kind of model these out. So, the thing with lemon verbena leaves is that they can get a little woodsy. Um, so, what do you mean by woodsy? Um, when you bite into one, they're not very, they're not a pleasant texture. They're like thick, they're mm. fibrous, mm. the stems themselves are really thick. Mm. So what I'm doing here is kind of like force infusing these really quick by muddling it into the oil. I see, and then will you strain it? Yes, and then I I'm see. to take Just this oil some. and go right ah. into Well, that's a, that's a chef's trick. So the flavor is also going to be a little light, but you know, like I said, this is this is one of those herbs that can get me soapy. You know, mm. like um, like uh, lavender. Mm, I see, I see, I see. Yeah, it is true because lavender I just associate with like wellness products now. You know, yeah, tinctures yeah. and whatnot. Um, but I do love like a little hint of lavender and like. Um, um, Anything chocolate. Oh my god, it's so good with green, green, dark chocolate. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. 10 out of 10. <laughs> right, so we got that and that, and then 
a little salt, and a little hit of lemon. Yeah. So you were talking about your mother. Um, does she know that you consume cannabis, and have you ever had a conversation with her? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You know what's funny about that? Um, for the longest time, my mom always talked about how special um, or how important hemp was. Oh, wow. In culture. So she, what's the word for hemp? Cañamo. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So she talks about like, oh, when I was young, like we just wrap everything up in like a cañamo burlap sack and, you know, things lasted longer and they were really resistant. And, yeah, they, yeah. and then like, you know, she talked about like cañamo salves and things like that. Okay. But when she found out that, she found out that my brother uh, consumed cannabis um, a long time ago and she had a really negative reaction to it. So she, mm. her and I never talked about it. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, like, he's like, a fuck okay, up and I'm like, I'm, like, <laughs> yeah. I'm, the, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I kind of like took a big step back at that point. But yeah, so she doesn't know that I do. But it, I don't know, I think it's funny because I do wonder to what extent was this pure hemp and um, some of the things that they use, like the salves and like the tinctures, which of them were actually like THC? Yeah, I mean, you know, or, now hemp is bred, so that's there is 0.3% THC or less, right? It's right. physically bred, and it's that's like a new thing that has right. um, most hemp before this had a little bit of THC. Didn't get you that high, it was very low. Sometimes it was a male plant, you know, so it, it, it depends on, um, but yeah, you know, it, 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 could, it could be one way, it could be the other. And um, yeah, I, I, do, I do think that it's so interesting that in different cultures it played a different role and it actually had a really positive like meaning. Yeah. And, um, Unfortunately, um, that's, I mean, that is our job to normalize it, but unfortunately back then, um, you know, with the war on drugs, we really screwed everything up for everyone, you know? We really did. I think, um, especially I think her, well, I don't know, I think it has a lot to do with colonialism and, you know, yeah. all those, like, charged topics, um, but I also think that it has a lot to do with what she was exposed to when we came to the U.S. Like yeah, tell me that, about that. Um, there were, we came to the U.S. during the Clinton years, but they were still very heavy about the war on drugs. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, we in school had the D.A.R.E. program, and it was like the first time I really started thinking or talking about drugs. And um, it came up at home when I went home, and I was like, don't you ever there, this and that. Mm -hmm. um, because of what she was consuming through American right. uh, television. So I, I can't say one way or the other what it would be, have been like had we remained in Ecuador. But at the end of the day, I feel like even there, the, the reach of these demonizing of plant medicines through colonial Western thinking was still present. Right, right, for sure. Um, that's really interesting. I mean, for... My mom, whenever, she actually still quotes, or not, not she actually still, but like that, that, um, uh, that propaganda um, footage of, this is your brain, and no. this is your brain on drugs, not and, it's a, and it's the egg, <laughs> and my mom tells me that, and it's like so crazy that, I, don't, I didn't learn about that egg until like yeah. much later, but like it's like my mom like was like yeah but what about your brain and like <laughs> your your head as an egg and then like I was like yeah that's 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 propaganda mom my head that's is not an egg <laughs> <laughs> and that's not what drugs does to you <laughs> well not cannabis at least some of the other things maybe <laughs> and who Jerry's doesn't want to be a this, fried egg <laughs> okay so this is wow awesome. that is so gorgeous. Also. So we just finished this guy up. Ooh, look at that. Where are we? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I kind of put down a little bit of arugula. Uh, it, it came in the box this week, so that's what we're running with. Um, yeah, and then just kind of build it vertical. 
you know, you can toss it at the table. This just makes it look really pretty. And if you can see here, I really like garden escapes. When you bite into one of those, it's just gonna kind of burst with like that, um, uh, I feel really boozy saying this word, that pecan flavor. <laughs> it's like kind of like a spice. What does pecan flavor mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, it's that raw garlic, raw onion pepper mm. mix. You know, there's a heavy spice to it. Why does that make you feel bougie when it's you say it? It's just such a funny word, pecan. pecan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now let's just finish up our tacos and... Tacos, 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 um, tacos. What we're doing with these guys is... You can kind of give them a rub in here. Oh, that another pro tip. Clears them out a little bit. I think I'm not doing the best job at it. We'll see how they look afterwards. Sometimes it works. Um, and then we're going to get like a quick little rinse to get everything off once we've taken all the seeds off. Oh. So in Chef's Table, um, the, there was like a, a guy from Spain and a guy from Mexico who like just started a, his own taco stand and started cooking his way up and then ended up at this like crazy big competition. And he just, every single meal essentially made salsa. <laughs> and he like, they somehow got him to like, the like top three or top four. And it was like pretty incredible, you know? Um, he made a salsa or the same salsa? Different, I mean salsas, right? Like, yeah, salsa I mean, he's, he's, he's the taco king and, yeah. and you know, whenever they're like, cause like chef's table is all about like, what is your culture and what is your identity and how do you infuse that into your food and tell a story about blah, blah, blah through like one bite, right? And it has to be beautiful. And he always, always, almost always um, puts a salsa in. Yeah, for me, it's like, I, for me, a perfect taco has to have like a balance of texture and flavors. Um, those flavors, I want there to be like a subtle sweetness, like an umami balm. Something spicy and some citrus. So, when I build a taco, I want those specific flavors to kind of like show up, but then also have like something crunchy, something that tortilla should be nice and soft mm -hmm. and pliable, um, and you know, um, something that has a fresh crunch, something that has a cooked crunch. So, um, gorgeous. These off. Um, before I mm -hmm. clean this up, I'm just going to go ahead and de-seed them because that's also a messy job. Okay. And I'm going to show you all how to do that. You just kind of like oh. decapitate on these little guys. Mm -hmm. And then empty its little guts into a little garbage bowl. Garbage bowl, compost bin. The veins are not a big deal, you just want to mostly get rid of the seeds, and then whatever you don't get into your garbage bowl will find its way out when you give them a rinse. What's your signature dish? You know what, like, I, I didn't have one, mm -hmm. and since starting in Kuna, I feel like my um, plant-based ceviche mm -hmm. have become very popular. Like, they get the most hype, um, yeah, plant-based ceviches. I've done um, a Mexican-style ceviche verde, which I think we did for the um, California... Street. Yeah. From the street. Yeah. Um, I've done a um, um, parts of palm for mm. the mm. and most recently I did a uh, watermelon. Uh, uh, it turned watermelon into ahi tuna, and oh, then that's they put cool. it into a poke. That's really cool. Yeah, it's a fun process. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about like where Poppy gets your stuff from because it's always so fresh. It's always so delicious. It's like the best ingredients to have in the kitchen. Thank you. <laughs> Coming from a chef, that means a lot. I mean, our honey, everybody knows, from my parents' backyard in the East Bay. Shout out to the Haystacks, Hayward, California. Um, and 
that is where I am born and raised, and that is where my parents still live, and that is where our bees are. And if you're in the Bay Area, this is raw, unfiltered local honey for you, hyper local honey. <laughs> and um, our olive oil, um, currently we're working with the other brother company. Um, they are these two awesome, it's very, very hot. Um, uh, they, uh, they source their olives from Carmel Valley. They also grew up in Carmel Valley on that orchard. So that's kind of awesome and badass. And, um, you know, ooh, that sound of sigil. Um, I, I really love working with farmers and family-owned farms, local and close to us. Mm -hmm. So... Um, that's where our olive is from, and actually we're going to be launching a, uh, smells so delicious and is a little bit distracting. We're going to be launching a, a new olive oil collaboration soon, so Looking forward to that. very exciting for that. And then um, our chili oil and our sriracha is actually a recipe from my parents. Um, my parents uh, own Uncle Chen and the Union International Food. Um, company brand and so our their their manufacturing space is actually in Union City and they've been servicing you know um, California for over uh, well not California just the U.S. for over 40 years making very traditional sauces um, Chinese sauces and um, other Asian uh, sauces and so our sriracha and chili oil are a direct in partnership with my family. And then finally, our apple cider vinegar from Santa Barbara, California. Oh, really? It's the only one that is in the Los Angeles, or like, sorry, not Los Angeles, SoCal area. Yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, Bragg's is the. Uh, oh, nice. Is the, uh, what is that called? You know, most famous for their um, apple cider vinegar. And we did a. Fun little unofficial partnership with them. <laughs> oh wow! So I'm sauteing a little bit of plant-based chorizo. I usually make my own. Yeah. Uh, but um, if I mean obviously uh, at home for the sake of ease, um, my favorite brand of the plant-based chorizo is Trader Joe's. Um, Soy Rizzo. Soy Rizzo. They um, I don't get the flavor perfectly. Most of uh, the other ones kind of turn into like a big mushy mess. Mm. This guy kind of just likes to hold its temperature right. I mean, hold its shape properly. And um, to this like quick saute, I'm gonna add some of the kale. So the kale, um, this I've already like kind of stripped and um, chopped. But just for the sake of showing you how to um, de-rib one of these guys, you grab the little woody stem and you kind of just pull it around against yeah. the, the grain and then you chop it up. And then you just chop it up. I'm, I like it nice and small, especially if it's going to go on the top. Oh. Yeah, I, I actually learned that from uh, like Blue Apron or one of those, like, like <laughs> it was one of the pro tips. I kind of strip it off and I was like, wow, I'm a chef. <laughs> I can do this. I can do this too. Oh, wow. I didn't know you tossed it in also. Um, that's awesome. Yeah. Just so a toasted have all this salad. Um, oh. I, that's so smart. You know, I, everybody likes a little bit of a toasted veggie, right? <laughs> so yeah, you can also do this in the oven. Sorry for making you use a spoon. <laughs> we don't have actually uh, actual spatulas here. I, I also went to look and I only have this like, this guy is not a, not I mean, but it's better than that. Word. <laughs> so much. Oh, I was just like, well, uh, since you're going for it, I'm going to ask. I'm so sorry. Um, no, I mean, no, I'm sorry. I should be. I'm mostly worried about this. This was a gift from at Saltwater Poppy. <laughs> um, uh, hey, you, I was up. like, he was like, yeah, it was my birthday, it was coming up, and he's like, what do you want for your birthday? And I was like, Amazon link sent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, actually, um, I'm kind of like looking for a a, a pan right now. <laughs> I really, really want a specific pan. Okay, so that's. 
So that's in Princess uh, So we did a little bit of the sandwich chorizo, some of um, the garlic steaks, the kale. So do you be so kind as to give me a little bit of water? Mm -hmm. The kale. And um, we sauteed it down. And then I hit it with a tiny bit of soy sauce. And I'm just going to hit it with a tiny bit of water. Weird. I'm a sous chef. <laughs> I'm going to pull up all the yummy flavors from the chorizo, but with that soy sauce, if you don't want to use soy because of the gluten situation, you can use tamari, but you could also use liquid aminos from Bragg's. Mm -hmm. um, you could also use coconut aminos. Um, so that does, just kind of brings out the umami flavor of this kale, which kind of like brightens it up and heightens it. Um, and that's kind of it. So this is going to be the base for the What I mentioned before, that like very umami flavor is going to be living in here. Um, I am going to use this clean spoon to get a little taste. Ooh, yeah. And you didn't add any salt in this, right? No salt in it. I made some Mila Chorizo air season. That's awesome. And the soy sauce brings all the salt mm. to the party. Mm. 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 It's taste test time! We love heat, we love spicy stuff. Alright, so I'm gonna get this off the heat. Yeah, you can just put it on the. Is it okay? Yeah, it's not. It's metal, so. And. Ooh, sorry about that. No worries. I'm gonna finish cutting out these peppers. So I'm just gonna cut them into rings. Wow, this is so professional. <laughs> like, I've seen this as the final, and sometimes you don't realize, like, that's what it takes. <laughs> so, there's this salad where you take sweet peppers. You can uh -huh. do red peppers, you can do Jimmy Nardellos, you can do Conoditoros, you can do gypsy peppers. Uh -huh. And when I was an omnivore, or an I, <laughs> I used back to do it back in the day. It was so simple. It was just the peppers grilled and peeled and cut into rings like this. Uh -huh. And um, you put them in a bowl with really, really high quality olive oil, mm. salt, pepper, fresh basil, raw and garlic. Olive. Yeah, and Rock then on. just let it sit while you while you grilled up your Santa Barbara uh, tri tip. Oh. A big bottle of Syrah. Oh my god, it was probably my favorite summer thing. Yay. <laughs> I do miss that a little bit sometimes. <laughs> Alright, so I've cut the peppers into like little, little ringlets and I am going to Ooh. hit it with this Happy. chimichurri. Ooh, those colors. You know, like I, I say this almost like everything, every time we film something, but it really is important to eat all the colors of the rainbow. Oh, right. You know, it's yeah. just, that's, that's, if you've got it all covered, you're pretty much <laughs> covered in the sense of, um, you need to eat. your health and like, what kind of. Well, because the, each color tells you something different about the veggie. Mm -hmm. And what vitamins you're getting from them, exactly. right? Like, thanks, thanks, nature, for color coordinating things for us. <laughs> very, very helpful. It's <laughs> <laughs> the best way to heat tortillas. It really it is. It really is. Delicious. What do you make to eat for yourself? Like, and you just shared one of those recipes. Is mm -hmm. um, this as something that you you you've made for yourself, but obviously in a slightly different way. But what are other things that you like to make? For I think I always have like my staples on hand. Like I'll always have rice. In Ecuador, we grew up. That was our main side dish. Everything we ate was with rice. Um, and just there, like us Chinese, <laughs> everything is with rice, over rice or over noodles. You know. Right. And so like there was rice or potatoes. So like I'll roast a big batch of potatoes at some point. And um, we have another like kind of towel or something. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll roast a big batch of potatoes for the week or have a big thing of rice and then kind of like do fried rice as needed. Um, when I cook for myself, it's so much 
unless it's like a, a weekend or like I'm cooking as part of like a self care routine, it because that for me it is too. Like when I'm kind of like feeling really creative, then I'll get to the kitchen, mm -hmm. um, and that tends to be when I try baking or mm, when I try <laughs> putting coming up with new recipes. Mm. But on the day to day, it's so simple. It's like really just like rice a fried egg. Um, like I do love having a lot of salads. Mm. Um, anything that you know, if I could fit in the biggest bowl I have, <laughs> and it's just so easy to like take down after. Um, I've been obsessed with um, chicken fried oyster mushrooms. Oh, I love oyster mushrooms. Yeah, and chicken so, fried. What do chicken you fried. So I'll soak you them like in. Bread them? Yeah, that they get in, they get kind of brined into in a vegan buttermilk, which is oat uh -huh. milk and a little bit of poppy vinegar mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, sriracha, uh, and um, then I'll, they'll go into just the egg, flour and then just the egg and the flour again. The thing I found about just the egg because it's mung bean based, it adds an oh. extra layer of crispness that, like when I tried the same recipe with egg, it didn't come through. Oh, interesting. So it was so cool, yeah. Like Do the vegan egg turned out better. Sometimes, yes. I'm okay. like 90 10 a veg uh, vegan vegetarian. So the thing that I do kind of falter on mostly is eggs. I don't do dairy. Um, but it's really hard to find no kill eggs. You know? Yeah. But you know, if, if the, the, the egg was like sustainably harvested from like, like free range chickens, like real chickens that had a wonderful life, <laughs> yeah. you know, like. The whole yeah. reason for people being vegan is like, you know, it is really top the farm, farmed animals and right. yeah. um, how poorly they're treated to just make food for us, essentially. But if they had a really wonderful life and <laughs> they, they made some extra eggs, you know, um, <laughs> those are meant that. to be eaten. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing I mean with like no-kill uh, eggs is that um, unfortunately, that even right now the standard for even those eggs mm -hmm. is that once a hen stops laying, it gets harvested. So it's not allowed right. to continue living on its natural life. Right. And so if I that that's like the part that like really gets me because mm -hmm. like I can rationalize taking an egg here out of there if I know that the hen is gonna like live its happy life. She's gonna be old, she's not gonna be laying, she's gonna yeah. retire. <laughs> like the rest she's of us to retire, yeah. <laughs> she has a little savings account. Uh, <laughs> an <laughs> IRA. <laughs> <you know? laughs> uh, That's cute. Yeah, there, there, there is a demand for it. Um, so if anyone's out there who knows or has no kill eggs, please shout out because I know. There's a huge demand for it in San Francisco. I'm one of those people. Yeah. I mean, we have a few uh, roosters and chickens, and um, we kind of just let them free range. Yeah. 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 We'll, we'll, we'll take them. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> let them do it. But, like, also sometimes, you know, once they've lived their life, it's also time to eat them. <laughs> you know, like, they have contributed to society and our welfare and our, you, you know, that ex, was, you know. Like, that was the uh, standard that we, like, helped to humans. <laughs> like, people in the South would be eaten by now for not consuming, I mean, contributing to society. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but... <laughs> this sparks greater conversation. Thanks, <laughs> <Sauce>. Political, political. <laughs> Uh, so with the tortillas, you uh, want to kind of you want to warm them up until they have a little bit of a char, uh, a char but they're still flexible. Um, they'll once you if, when you I recommend doing them in a batch because once you like stack them up and you wrap them up in a nice little like clean dish cloth or whatever you have around, uh, it'll steam and that'll keep them pliable. Um, if you don't feel like doing this whole process. You can uh, stick them in a little pouch or wrap them in a moist paper towel or a Ziploc bag and stick them in the microwave and just kind of keep turning them every 10 seconds until they're nice and pliable. And then the same process, put them into a uh, clean dish cloth. I'm <laughs> Do it. That's your indoctrination into Latin culture. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <Yay>. <laughs> I 
<laughs> All right, let's do it. So we're going to get this a quick little mm -hmm. wipe. And we're going to plate up some tacos. Tacos. All right. That's got to hit in there. <laughs> Oh, oh, this one's a little so, like crispy. Oh, crispy boy. Oh, right. Gorgeous. So, to fill the taco. Ooh, avos. I mean, you've been um, doing good in terms of like uh, almost every box has avos. Is it avo seed? I mean, I guess it's kind of always avo so, season now. It's easy to get avocados in California. Um, yeah. There's just, I think, like, there are two times in the year where you can't really get avocados in North America or South America. So that's like a bleak avo, avo season. I don't remember exactly what the time of the year is. But yeah, I wanted to, in this box, have things that are like familiar, yet that, you know, you wouldn't be, um, what's the word? Um, uh, you like wouldn't like to not know what to do with them. Yeah, exactly. You wouldn't be intimidated by. Um, so like sometimes there are some things that I'm like I don't know what to do. With them. <laughs> like Andres, and that was actually the idea for this show came when I was like Andres, what do you do with this stuff? I don't know how to eat it. Um, and I think that's also the reason why we're doing this show, right? Because now yeah. you'll get to see what a chef does and the person that curated this box would do with this. And then um, we'll also come up with more ideas on how to use all of these ingredients um, if you don't, uh, you know, want to make these two recipes, you know, there will also be other things that we can, you know, do. Yeah. So, goodness gracious, this plating is just delectable. So, um, yeah, and so, you know, I also do want to, like, geek out. Sometimes, like, with those angel pots, I'm like, I have never seen these because I always miss the season and I want to share that with the world. So. Oh my goodness, they're so layered. Uh, so pretty. So one of the things that I did forget about what I feel like a taco should always have too is a creamy moment. And for me, mm. that is the avocado in this. Mm. Get creamy, smoky, spicy. Yeah, I love how you kind of like layer the bottom with thin slices of avo. Mm -hmm. Oh, some chimichurri up top, and then we're gonna finish it off with some sriracha. Yes, please. Let's hit it with a little hotly sriracha. Get these guys nice and covered. One milligram, or one milliliter is one milligram. So, let's go, baby. That is like, that is like a one milligram taco. <laughs> one or two milligrams. <laughs> there you are. And gorgeous. Oh, where's my light? Find your light. Um, Ooh. <laughs> pretty colorful tacos, chorizo, avocado, garlic ramps, and a lovely like, little salad. Oh, yeah. Delicious. Okay, let's <laughs> dig in. Let's do this. Yeah. Let's Sorry, we don't have a, we don't have forks in this house. <laughs> Chopstick time. Ah, yeah, yeah. Is this okay with you? <laughs> yes, yeah. Oh, well, these Give are the, the hot list Potley Sriracha chopsticks. <laughs> so you can actually find these at potleyshop.com if you were looking yes. for merch. So, hey, <laughs> um, all right, let's do this. Oh my god, this is so good. It's super light, but it does perfume it a little bit. Mm -hmm. right? So you could just kind of give it all a nice big toss. And the olive oil oh, really comes out in this one too. This could actually really use a good bit of chili oil. Ooh. Like nice... We got some of that. <laughs> Poppy chili. Perfect. Um, Did it. I love... Um, Mexican street fruit salads, you know, you have mm -hmm. like the fruit that has all the chili and all those like yummy, super intense flavors. So, mm -hmm. there you go. Delicious. Right? A little bit of everything, get a little arugula. 
salt, I mean, spicy and sweet is such a, a like a Mexican or like South American, like, I they just like really crush it. I feel like get away, and get, get along really, really well. Really well. Like and a little bit of sour too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Yeah. Mmm. <laughs> mm. That chili right. oil really brought it next level mm-hmm. though. I will admit that. Mm-hmm. See, and that's the stuff where sometimes you just gotta taste a little bit and see what it's missing. Yeah. And act. <laughs> I love that you used all of the ingredients. You used all of I the ingredients. I love using your stuff. It's just always right. All right. Like, right. Terrio. This one. Boop. Oh, cheers. Mmm. It's so light yet, like so depth. There's so much depth in the flavor. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the chorizo is nice and spicy. Um, mm-hmm. The sweetness and the peppers kind of balance it, like balance everything out. Mm-hmm. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> They're so hard to keep together. I know. <laughs> well, there we All have right. it. I mean, my mouth is full of spicy <laughs> sauce, but there we have it. Um, Two amazing recipes that was made from this box. And you can absolutely, um, if you're in the Bay Area, uh, subscribe to this box. Um, It comes on every Tuesday, um, delivered by this guy himself. And please support. And then thank you from Potley as well. Um, All the ingredients you can buy in California for the cannabis side. And then if you just want some CBD products, you can mail it directly to you at polyshop.com. So thank you so much. This has been a wonderful first awesome. trailer episode. <laughs> Yay! Talk of-